Romans. Romans chapter 4. We were, we've been in Romans for going on six weeks now. Did a couple of introductions. And we've been trying to do a chapter a week. And this morning we're going to take on chapter 4. We've called this sermon, What About Abe? <laughs> what? what about Abe? What about Abe? Well, Paul starts off. And, uh, if you read with me over in <coughs> chapter 4, verse 1. So what then shall we say that Abraham, our father, forefather, discovered in this matter? You remember last week we talked about boasting rights? He's still talking about boasting. Let's talk about Abraham, whether he could boast or not, basically. If, in fact, Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does the Scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, when a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the man who does not work, but trusts God who justifies the wicked, his faith is credit, credited as righteousness. David says the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness of the man to whom God credits righteousness, apart from works. Blessed are those whose offenses have been forgiven and whose sins have been covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will never count against him. Is this blessedness only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? We have been saying that Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. Under what circumstances was it credited? Was it after he was circumcised or before? It was not after, but before. And he received circumcision as a sign and a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. So then, he is the father of all who believe, but who have not been circumcised, in order that the righteousness might, might be credited to them. And he is also the father of the circumcised, who, are not, who not only are circumcised, but also those, <laughs> sorry, but who also walk in the footsteps of the faith that their father Abraham had before he was circumcised. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who live by, their, by laws are heirs, faith has no value and the promise is worthless because faith brings wrath. I'm sorry, law brings wrath. Mm, because law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. He's the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls things as though they are I'm sorry, calls things that are not as those they were. <laughs> Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it has been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. <clears throat> Since he was about 100 years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words it was credited to him were written not for him only, but also for us to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was delivered over to faith for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Abraham. I don't know what you think of when you think of Abraham. Ah, oh, father, old beard. Right? 100, but yeah, 100 years old is when he had his son Isaac, when he told him he was going to have a son. Abraham was the beginning. For some reason, Paul says, we got to go back to the beginning. I mean, he's already convinced you, right? Through chapters, you know, 1 through 3, you, you're already convinced, aren't you, that all you need is faith in Jesus? Right? No. 
No, you're not. He hasn't won yet. He hasn't convinced them. He hasn't convinced you. No, oh, wait. He convinced me. No, he didn't. You still think that even though you trust that Jesus did all He said He was going to do when He covered your sins, that you still got to do something else. Don't you? You're, you're just not a believer yet. So what do we got to do? We got to go back to the beginning. Let's go all the way back to Abraham. Remember last week we talked about, well, two weeks ago we talked about the Jewish male and what he brought in to his belief in Jesus. This idea about being special, this idea about having something. Well, that all goes back to Abraham. They trace their lineage all the way back to Abraham, but uh, they're not the only ones to trace their lineage to Abraham, are they? God says you're going to be the father of many nations. He was the father of Ishmael, who the Arab nations trace their lineage to, our Muslim friends. He was the father of Isaac. And he had five more after that. I don't know if you knew that. This is Genesis chapter 25. After Sarah died, he married another woman and he had an additional five children. That makes sense. You know how old he lived to be? 175 years. That means after he was as good as dead, his body was as good as dead, and 100 years old, and he fathered a child because he trusted God, he also went on to father five more. You remember, we're talking about boasting here. That's something uh, that we probably would boast about, wouldn't it? Right? This is before Viagra, guys. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about boasting. Does he have a right to boast? Maybe he has a right to boast about that. But what about being justified? What about the fact that God looked at him and said, Abraham, you're okay with me. That's what it means to be justified. His creator looked at him and said, you're all right with me. Now we can talk about Abraham's life and all the times he lied about things. A lot of times he lied to protect himself, told people that Sarah was his sister and gave her to be married to the king and to the pharaoh. And we talk about those things and all the other times that Abraham just kind of just didn't do things that we would be real proud of. But God looked at him and said, you know what, Abraham, you're okay with me. You stand in a just relationship with me. Why? Because when I said it, I was going to do something, you trusted me. That's why you're okay with me. Now we have problems with the word trust, okay? Matter of fact, one of our problems is characterized by how many different words we use for it in the New Testament. We use three synonyms for trust, don't we? We have a hard time defining what that means without using a synonym. Have you ever tried to define something without using a synonym? We have these three words. Faith, belief, and trust. Right? So what's it mean to have faith? Well, it means you believe. Okay, what's it mean to believe? Well, it means you trust. Well, what's it mean to mean that you trust? Well, it means you have faith. Have we defined anything? No, we're just using synonyms. You know how many words there are in Greek in your New Testament that we translate three different ways? One. Just one. We use three different words for that one word. Why? Because we're confused. Really, we want to have some nuances. We want to see some fine distinction. We want, there's only one word. 